The heels of the feet should be shoulder width apart with the dominant foot in front and toes pointing toward the opponent. The rear foot is turned out at 90 degrees and the knees should be bent for better flexibility and balance. Your sword hand is extended forward with the point of the sword pointing toward your opponent's eyebrows. The secondary hand is placed in front of the torso to be used for emergency saves. The modern fencing step is used where the leading foot goes first, followed by the rear foot. To move back, the rear foot moves first, followed by the leading foot. You can guard either the right or left side of the body. When guarding the right, the sword is held to the right so the opponent has no target on that side. To guard the left side, the sword is simply moved to the other side, keeping the point in the middle. This drill is for practicing maintaining distance and changing guards. There is one person leading the footwork and guards and the other mirror him. When he steps forward, the other steps back and vice versa. When he changes guard, so do they. This drill is for a pair of sword fighters within lunge distance to practice maintaining distance, similar to the previous drill. One person leads the footwork and the other steps to keep the distance between them the same. In this drill, one sword fighter will beat the other's sword, which means to hit it off the line or out of the way, with his own sword. He then extends his sword arm in preparation for a thrust. Then, footwork can be added and the drill repeated. The lunge is when one sword fighter extends his sword and takes a large step forward by propelling himself with the back leg, hitting the opponent squarely in the chest. Now you can practice the beat and extend with a lunge, first stationary and then with the person being hit leading the footwork. To defend against the beat, extend lunge. The defending sword fighter can parry by moving her sword across her body to close the line. The point of the sword stays toward the opponent and the hand turns so that the true edge of the sword makes contact with the opponent's. This should be done stationary and then with footwork. After successfully avoiding the opponent's attack with a parry, the defending sword fighter should extend her sword in a counterattack. Because the opponent is within range, he receives a blow to the face. This should be done first stationary, then with footwork. One way for the first sword fighter to get around the defender's parry is to disengage, which means he brings his sword under the defender's and lunges, hitting her in the chest. This is first practiced stationary and then with footwork.